Hello everybody, let's talk about careers in psychology and this video is for uh, psych majors who are interested in what careers are for them. And so if you're interested in the information in the slideshow, relax. Uh, there's going to be a copy of the slideshow slides available and look in the video description uh, to find the slideshow. So here's what we're going to talk about today, uh, career options with a BA, uh, what to do now and what options you have, and career options with an MA or PhD in psychology, uh, what to do now also. So let's look first at career options in general. And so let's say that you're thinking about a career. Let me find my laser pointer see that you're looking for a career, go to ONET. ONET uh, is at this web address and uh, this is the uh, government's uh, repository for information about uh, jobs. And if you go to My Next Move, which is part of the ONET site, you can take a uh, interest inventory. Uh, it's the Holland Inventory, which is a very, very popular interest inventory in uh, industrial organizational psychology to help people find out what their interests are. And then it will tell you which careers or which jobs would be suited for somebody with your interests. So if you are really at a, at a loss to, real, to really know what you want to do, uh, check out the Holland Inventory, uh, My Next Moves at uh, ONET. Now let's move specifically to career options for a BA degree. Uh, so first off, got to tell you that according to the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, less than 25% of all BAs find work related to their major. So if you're a chemist, if you're in business major, uh, you know, there's less than a quarter chance that you're going to end up in a job right away or relatively soon after you graduate, which is related to your field. And we see that with York psych majors. Once they graduate, they end up in uh, mid-level and entry-level management and administration positions or sales or marketing. Uh, one benefit that you have of being here in New York City is New York City has this huge uh, human uh, social or social service system. So a lot of our uh, graduates get jobs in terms of being case managers, career counselors, rehabilitation specialists, and psychiatric technicians. What to do now if you're interested in a job in psychology right after you graduate? Uh, the practicum is, I think, a very important thing to do. Right now, Dr. Davies is the coordinator for the practicum. So if you're interested in this, uh, you know, talk to Dr. Davies during advisement. Uh, it's 290 and it's field experience in psychology. And you volunteer in a psych setting such as a clinic, hospital, or shelter and try to get into a position which is close to your next career, you know, to your future career. The idea being you want to have experience to put on your resume uh, that you know the area, but more importantly, if you know, if you've worked in the area and you know people in the area, then you can use that in, uh, those contacts to network once you're starting to look for a job. So this is one of the most important things that you can do uh, before you graduate. Uh, you know, if uh, you're interested in getting a psych job right after you graduate with your BA. Uh, what to do now? Uh, focus on your GPA. It's not just your GPA, so that means your GPA is important, but you need to gain experience with groups and leadership. So think about joining one of our clubs. Uh, you need to uh, develop your skills with verbal communication and written uh, communication. So work with professors when they uh, want to have you give verbal or oral presentations or uh, you know when they ask you to write papers and really focus on that and look for extra opportunities uh, that uh, your professors or York could offer in terms of developing your verbal and written communication. And finally, what to do now? Google yourself and see what's on the open internet about yourself because people looking at you for a job will do that also. Try to clean up your internet presence. 
uh, try to hide or delete uh, you know Instagram or Facebook or MySpace that's a joke accounts uh, with uh, questionable uh, you know uh, photos or information and then also fill up your internet presence uh, get a professional tr Twitter account or a LinkedIn account uh, only if what you do is interesting uh, but the one reason why you want to do that is that you can use it to network and you make contacts by networking and you use those contacts to find jobs you could apply for or get recommendations for jobs you can apply for so those are some of the things you can do right now if you want to get a psych job right after you graduate now let's move on to the career options if you have a master's degree or a PhD so what we're talking about now is professional careers uh, you'll become a psychologist or a therapist and these careers require graduate school and I'm going to be talking about four different options an MA in general psychology uh, MA in professional in a professional program a PsyD and a PhD uh, and the MAs take about two years the PsyD three to four years and the PhD four years plus so first off you're going to be going to graduate school so what is graduate school like for an MA or PsyD program you're going to have lecture classes kind of like college uh, but you're going to have some seminars and uh, mainly going to be lecture classes but you're going to have a couple seminars thrown in the material that you read uh, and the expectations for you are going to be more difficult than college and you're going to focus on one topic uh, and usually this topic is going to be related to your practical training in terms of counseling or psychotherapy what is grad school like if you're going to a PhD program that's a major change first off you're not going to have any lecture classes or you're going to have only a couple lecture classes your classes uh, when you do have them will be seminars uh, in seminars you read professional level material and you show up to the seminar and you're expected to discuss uh, this material as a professional would uh, you focus on one subtopic of one topic uh, and usually this is related to a research project so you're given research training and you do a lot of research work students ask me well if you're not in class and you're not listening to lectures as a PhD what are you doing well you're doing a lot of research work and so think about this you're in college quote unquote uh, but you're not taking classes you're basically just hanging out in the lab and doing stuff and that's a, a pretty big difference it may be practical training based on what you're specifically interested in and also this is going to be very individual uh, that research work you're going to be doing is usually by yourself or in a small lab uh, you're not gonna have a large group of fellow students in several different classes uh, it's going to be at best a, a very small group of people in the same program as you or in the same lab as you but a lot of your work is going to be by yourself so let's talk about career options with an MA from a professional program and so what I'm talking about is getting a master's degree uh, in mental health counseling and you could sub uh, as a mental health and family a marriage and family therapist or creative arts therapy uh, this is a you know ma masters is a two years uh, program once you uh, graduate and are licensed what will happen is you will go to work underneath a licensed psychologist and so what you'll do is you'll work in a mental health center and you'll see uh, clients for 50 minutes uh, a week or you'll do uh, group counseling for 50 minutes a week or an hour and a half a week and you'll be supervised by a, a higher level uh, psychologist uh, so that's generally what it'd be like but students who say I want to do therapy I want to help people well this is your easiest option the important thing is that you need to graduate from a licensed program so you need to find a licensed program these two web pages for New York State will help you find a licensed program and help you define the license types 
for New York State. So it's critical that you look at these and you look for programs that are licensed in New York State if you're interested in going to graduate school in New York State. Uh, you know, I was mainly talking about, uh, you know, counseling psychology. Uh, there are many master's degrees in industrial organizational psychology. IO psychologists do employment testing, human resource selection, performance appraisal. They monitor fair employment practices. They'll end up working in human resource departments, government agencies, and consulting firms. firms. Uh, I would suggest that you check out, if you're interested, uh, the class uh, 253 IO psychology or the Society of Industrial and Organizational Psychologists at www.psyop.org. Excuse me. Okay, so now let's switch over and uh, look at career options with an MA from a general psychology program. So these are programs that have, are literally called a general psychology program. These uh, are not professional programs and they're not licensed programs. So you cannot practice with this degree. Uh, you know, to get an MA, you know, when you get an MA uh, in a general psych program, you can apply to PhD programs, but the downside is many classes may not transfer. So if you think I'm kind of dissuading you against these general programs, uh, I kind of am because uh, what you're doing is you're not going to get a master's degree, which will be uh, which will a, 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 uh, make you able to be licensed. And so you really cannot practice as a psychologist with one of these master's degrees. So, uh, so it may actually be a waste of money and waste of time. Now let's move over to PsyD. Uh, the PsyD is a uh, doctoral level uh, degree in psychology, but not the same as a PhD. It's uh, like a PhD without the research component. And they're offered in clinical psychology, some are offered in industrial organizational psychology. And these are interested, these are for people who are interested in practice in either clinical psychology or IO psychology and not teaching and not research. And so uh, you know, the PsyD was especially designed for people interested in practice, not research or teaching. But now let's talk about uh, the PhD, the Doctor of Philosophy. Uh, this is a PhD uh, degree. It's the highest uh, degree in many fields. Uh, this will enable you to do practice, research, and teaching. And in psychology, it could be specialized in any of these fields. Look at that whole list. Uh, so as I said before, uh, with a PhD degree, you're going to focus on practice, research, and teaching. You'll end up working in a college situation or university situation, working with the government, in industry, in a consulting uh, firm or a private practice, depending upon which one of all of these different special uh, specialties you focus on. So you want to go to graduate school, master's or PhD or PsyD, what do you do now? Explore your career options. Take different classes. Are you interested in clinical? Uh, take abnormal, take personality. Uh, are you interested in IO psych? Take IO psychology. Uh, check out ONET as I suggested before. And it's never too early to look at graduate programs. You can look at graduate programs by looking at websites. Uh, the individual graduate programs, it's very important for you to look at these websites. So it's bold and underlined. Uh, it's critically important at different stages of your prep work for graduate school to look at the individual graduate programs you're interested in to see exactly what they require. Uh, you can all go, also go to the website of the American Psychological Association and they have uh, resources available for uh, students and also PSYOP uh, if you're interested in, in industrial organizational psychology. They have a lot of material there. Or you could look at publications. U.S. News and World Reports uh, ranks graduate schools and then there are books such as Graduate Study in Psychology which list uh, graduate programs 
and their requirements. What to do now? Your GPA. I can't underemphasize how important this is. Uh, if your GPA uh, is uh, greater than 3.0, uh, that's okay. 3.0 is the lower limit of GPAs a grad school will accept uh, school will accept applications from. That is, most graduate schools and the graduate schools that are worth going to uh, usually have a lower limit of a 3.0 GPA. And so if you have a 2.9, they literally will not look at your GPA, they will reject it. So you have to have at least a 3.0 for them to look at your application. Uh, however, uh, you know, if you have between a 3 and a 3.5, this is usually not a competitive GPA for graduate schools. You have to have above a 3.5 to be competitive. Uh, so depending upon the program, it may even be higher. So uh, students with a 3.1, a 3.2, a 3.0, yes, they will look at your application, but uh, things are going to be stacked against you. There's going to be a lot of applicants with 3.7s, 3.8s, 3.9s, 4.0s. If you're above a 3.5, uh, most students applying to graduate programs have above a 3.5. You need to be, you know, uh, above a 3.5 to be competitive. Really, you need to be above a, a 3.75. Uh, uh, whoops, go back. A 3.75 to be uh, competitive. Uh, and you can use this calculator here to really see how difficult it is to raise significantly your GPA once you have about like 90 credits uh, completed. Uh, you need to see your advisor. You have a psych advisor uh, for classes and go talk to them about graduate school. And then you need to get a graduate school advisor. Uh, if I'm your advisor for classes, and I'm a social psychologist and I.O. psychologist, I may not be the best uh, advisor if you're interested in clinical psychology. So find uh, you know one of our professors who is a clinical psychologist. I'm picking on one. I won't mention her name, but uh, we only have one. And ask her if, Dr. Mokru, if uh, she will advise you in getting into clinical programs. Uh, be aware of the GRE. The GRE is like the SAT for graduate school. Uh, this is the ETS website for the GRE. Uh, you'll have to take it. It's a very weird test. Uh, and uh, I recommend uh, giving yourself an early uh, start on studying for it and taking it. So if you don't do as well the first time, you can take it again and maybe try to raise your score. Uh, so uh, the GRE is important. You know, usually the GPA, the GRE, and the letters of recommendations are the three things that are critically important. So we've talked about two of them. The third is letters of recommendations. You need three letters from professors. Students come to me and say, can I have one from my pa no. no. No, not from your pastor, not from somebody at work. No, no. Uh, the only exception is in some master's programs, they may ask for applied, uh, you know, letters from apply, people who have experience with you in applied situations. But in general, uh, if you are asked for letters, oh, it's on automatic, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're asked for letters of recommendation, it must be from professors. The best source is from professors who have individual experience with you and that usually uh, translates to research experience in uh, independent studies and also I'm gonna say avoid adjuncts uh, the re and uh, I say avoid I'm not ruling them out uh, but I'm saying avoid them because uh, Professors who are evaluating applications to graduate school are research professors, and they are really only interested in uh, full-time professors and recommendations from full-time professors. So try to avoid adjuncts. I, I would sometimes go as far to say, no, don't, don't get any adjuncts. That would actually work against you. And uh, other things you can do. 
uh, you know, Psychi is the International Psychology Honorary, and uh, the deadline is in early spring. Uh, Dr. Prizer is the uh, coordinator for that, uh, and uh, you have to have a certain GPA level. I think the GPA is a 3 or 3.25 in psychology or above. And uh, you have to you know, submit an application and your official transcripts. And if you're in, it's 35 bucks, and it's a really nice and it's a really nice honor. But that's about it. And then I mentioned before, the letters of recommendation should have independent research. Uh, you know, you professors who have uh, experience with you in independent research. You get that through Psych 490s. Uh, and most of the full-time professors in the psychology department do 490s. So talk to the professor that you like or the professor that does research uh, that is associated to what you're interested in. And you sign up for them like a normal class. And uh, you know that's what uh, and then you uh, do research with the professor. As I said, you sign up for you know 490 like a normal class uh, three credit hours uh, that means that you'll work six to nine clock hours per week uh, the activities you'll work on a professor's project a research project you'll work on your own project or you'll work on a special topic of interest and just a couple examples uh, so uh, you know uh, here's a couple students. They came to me and they said we want to do an independent study on, uh, you know, uh, what was it, uh, you know, in IO psychology, and so uh, we worked on it, and I came up with a short little project they could do on IO psychology, and they did it and they uh, submitted it to a couple conferences, and here they are presenting. Uh, you know, one of the posters at a conference. Uh, and Cherry and Liz here, and that's Liz up there also, they worked on one of my research projects with me. So they ran ex uh, experiments, both of them, and so they were able to join with me. Uh, here's Cherry presenting a poster at an undergraduate conference, and this is Liz and myself presenting the poster at a professional conference. Uh, sometimes students will come to me and say, I want to do this project. Uh, you know, let's see, Nadia and uh, Reno uh, were interested in this project that Nadia uh, came up with in my social psych class on uh, Muslim American guilt in response to news stories about terrorists. And so before they graduated, we started doing research on their project and we got the pilot study done before and then they graduated. And so that was pretty much it. Uh, and then also I do uh, special topics on uh, Wikipedia editing, uh, the you know APS, the American Psychological Association or societies. Uh, you know, Wikipedia initiative wants to improve the quality of Wikipedia articles on psychology. And so I often have uh, single students or groups of students working with me each semester, and they will independently edit different Wikipedia uh, articles. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Brandon there, he, uh, one of his articles was given good article status, which I believe only one article in 200 or so on Wikipedia uh, get that status. Uh, Nadia is a, uh, ma has a master's degree in social work. Uh, Reno has a master's degree in IO psychology. Uh, last I heard, Liz was in uh, graduate school getting her master's in counseling. Uh, you know, uh, let's see, Nick is uh, in graduate school, and Cherry has been doing, uh, has been working in business, and based on the uh, people who call me for job, uh, you know, uh, recommendations, it seems to be a very good set of jobs. So just a couple examples of what type of research projects you can do with professors. All right, so uh, for more information, you can see me, uh, my room number, my phone, and uh, my email address, or more importantly, talk to your psych advisor.